Intel naming Swan its permanent CEO. Earlier this morning, he had been serving as interim CEO and CFO since Brian Krasanit stepped down in June. Uh, I was on the phone with Bob just moments ago and asked him, what about the discrepancy? What changed over time between not being interested and now being CEO? And he told me, I said at the time and reiterated that I wasn't interested at the time when he took the interim position. What changed was, number one, he went from loving his day job to loving the company. And then he said the second thing that changed, I was asked. The board asked him to take the job. I tried to press him further on exactly the timeline behind all of that. Curious whether, I mean, normally companies will put in a CFO to signal to potential external candidates this job really is open. There's a legitimate uh, race here as opposed to putting in somebody in an operational role who is an heir apparent. Um, and, and apparently they did look at external candidates. Um, I, I also talked to Bob Swan. He, he put out an email to Intel employees with really four priorities going forward. One of those was execution. And we just heard from Microsoft last night that one of the issues in their more personal computing division, which includes Windows and PCs, was just supply constraint. There weren't enough chips out there for OEMs to supply uh, the demand that they saw from customers, and that's on Intel. And uh, Bob Swan told me we have dramatically expanded the role we play in the industry, and so he is focused on, quote, making sure we don't constrain the growth by not having the product when customers need it. Guys, so, you know, sometimes they say I'm not interested, but they become interested rather quickly. Yeah, John, that's very interesting that what we just heard from you talking to Swan. It kind of goes along with, again, the question we were asking, which is, wait a second, how does a guy go from saying that on TV with you and others not very long ago to taking the job permanently? But my understanding is initially he did not think he was really a candidate when he first took the job, of course, with Przanich's unexpected departure mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, and so perhaps was sort of um, trying to cushion the possibility of his own rejection by saying he was not interested. They did get down the path far, I am told, with one particular candidate. It did not end up happening. That was fairly recently. And they went back to him, and to your point, and what he said to you, he was asked and then said yes. So I guess you can square the two, but it does kind of have an odd look to it. You know, what? when I did that Fort Knox interview with Bob, which you can see the full thing uh, on CNBC.com and on YouTube and the Fort Knox channel, it, it, after that, an analyst contacted me and said, you know, it, it's interesting, in meetings with analysts, he seems more open to the job. Yeah, so what's that about? And I said, hey, I put the whole interview out there. What you know is, is, is what I know. What I know is what you know. Make of it what you will. Um, you know, what I also hear from somebody close to the board is, that made this decision, he, they, they were very impressed with what they felt was his ability to build credibility with customers and employees beyond just the financial community where he already had decent currency as the CFO. Absolutely, and execution is one of the things that he's going to continue to focus on, Carl. The other thing was uh, Kramer this morning was arguing that uh, a company like this needs uh, a chip designer, not, uh, not a financial guy. What do you think? Um, I think they had one, an engineer's engineer in Brian Krasanich, a guy who was very familiar with chip process, who had been running the fabs. What did they run into? They ran into a, a chip process problem and, and not having the fabs ready to produce 10, 7 nanometer chips. So, you know, they, they need execution, and they seem to think that they can get that from Bob Swan based on how he performed during this interim period, getting things back on track. He told me they still expect to have the next generation of chips out at the end of this year. That's what customers want to see so we don't end up with another supply constraint problem like we had in the holiday.